Let us now discuss that what are the reasons for an IVF failure. This is often a component which a lot of IVF centers miss out on and lack on. We have to remember that the patient after an IVF cycle is extremely stressed as it is and if there is a negative result, the patient is absolutely shattered. To understand the reasons for failure, we need to remember a few basic facts first. You have to remember what was told to you on the first day of the treatment that the chance of success is just 40 to 50 percent per cycle. Now if it is 40 to 50 percent per cycle, it means that if there were 10 patients with you, maybe 4 or 5 got pregnant, but 5 or 6 will fail. This does not mean that these 5 or 6 will never get pregnant again, but it is important to go into a deeper analysis of the entire case history, the egg quality, the embryo quality and the lining of the womb to reach a conclusion as to what exactly was the reason for failure. If once we put aside that the chance is only 40% and if the patient has again failed a second cycle, we then need to consider whether it was abnormal eggs, what is the age of the patient, what was her basal ovarian reserve, what was her serum AMH and FSH levels, what, are we dealing with a patient with a very poor ovarian reserve and therefore very poor egg quality or are we dealing with a patient of unexplained infertility where poor quality eggs has now turned out to be the reason for the IVF failure. So this is how the IVF center and our team of counselors and doctors would go about trying to find out that which particular cause was applicable in your case. So we know that one third of failures of IVF are because of problems with the egg or the embryo, but two thirds of uh, failures in IVF are because of some problem with the lining of the womb or the uterus, which is known as the endometrium. It doesn't mean there is something obviously wrong with its structure or its look, but it may be just some hormone imbalance which may be related to the ovarian stimulation protocol, the drugs and the doses given to you which put that lining out of synchrony with the stage of the embryo growth and therefore they could not get together in that particular month. And this is where our clinic tries, tries to strive and give you a better outcome with these things in mind. So if we feel that there is a failed implantation as the cause of the first cycle in spite of good quality eggs and embryos, then in the next cycle, we would probably approach a freeze-all policy. That means there would be no fresh embryo transfer. We want to make sure that the endometrium is very receptive. So we would take out your eggs, fertilize them and freeze all the embryos by the new technique of vitrification. Our, then our focus, especially for patients who have had a thin lining or who have had repeated failure of IVF cycles or they have had recurrent miscarriages in the past, which is also an indication for this kind of approach. We would then proceed with maybe in some indicated patients what is known as intentional endometrial injury which is performed using an endometrial scratch. A lot of you might have read about this and this is a good way of beginning the frozen embryo cycle. Then after the menstruation, once she is she started on a high dose of estrogen tablets to build up the endometrium to a good thickness. Sometimes we also use low dose aspirin to improve the blood flow in the lining of the uterus. And sometimes we give vaginal sildenafil to again improve the blood flow to the uterus lining. If after all this for 10 to 15 days we still feel that the lining is yet not ready to accept an embryo, we put in a new drug called granulocyte colony stimulating factor that is GCSF. Very simply it is just introduced into the uterine cavity and then after 5 days of giving you progesterone we would do a good frozen embryo transfer. In our mind and with our experience this has worked beautifully consistently giving success rates of 40 to 50 percent in this particular difficult group of patients. And which patients are we talking about? Patients who have failed more than two or three IVF cycles, either at our center or any other center anywhere in the world, or patients who have a persistently thin endometrium but are not yet mentally prepared or acceptable to the idea of surrogacy. These would be genuine valid indications who would like to go in for, who we would like they go in for this approach and try to get a 40% success rate yet. The reason we went so deep into implantation was that over the last 10 years, especially the last 5 years, our clinic has become kind of a tertiary referral center. You wouldn't believe it, but in last month, out of 186 patients which we did of IVF, almost 130 were patients who had failed 3 or more IVF cycles somewhere in some corner in some center anywhere in the world in, from any country. And this is when we realize that all of them may not be open to third party options such as surrogacy or donor eggs and we need to offer them something more which is realistic and workable and practical and easy to do.
and that is why we came up with this approach of more intensive use of vitrification and freezing of embryos and more scientific preparation of the uterus to ensure that they get the best possible pregnancy rates and viable live births. Currently our clinic is draining patients from more than 40 nations worldwide and which is why we have to be updated and have to make sure that all the latest technology is available at our clinic.